Hello, fellow book lovers, both readers and writers. I am Maddie Dollarbolt. I write the Ann suspense novels and suspense shorts and the Lithium Ballard thrillers. And I also write, speak, podcast, and consult on the writing craft and the publishing voyage as the indie author. And you can find out more about me at maddiedowenpool.com and at theindieauthor.com. And this is my video series, What I Learned, where I ask authors two questions related to their latest book. What did they learn from that book that they would like to share with their fellow writers? And what did they learn that they would like to share with their fellow readers? And today I am joined by Pamela Fagan Hutchins. Hey, Pamela, how are you doing? I'm great. I'm so good to see you again. It is lovely seeing you as well. And to give our viewers a little bit of background on you, Pamela Fagan Hutchins is a USA Today bestselling and Amazon all-star mystery thriller suspense author of more than 30 books translated into 10 languages, known for her strong female characters, wild settings, and exciting plots that embrace romance, family, and all the feels. She's also a proud grandmother and the host of the Crime and Wine podcast, which I was excited to be a part of. Okay. And uh, Pamela is living out her adventures in her books at a rustic lake camp in Minnesota's Moose Look Lake and in the off-the-grid lodge on the face of Wyoming's Bighorn Mountains with her husband, sled dogs, and draft horses. And her latest book is Her Last Cry. So I am going to start out today asking Pamela the first of our two What I Learned questions, which is, what did you learn that you would like to share with your fellow writers? This, uh, I, this I've thought about a lot. And I think that because I released three at once, this was a series release that my publisher is, I want to say experimenting with, but that that's that's not fair to them. They have a lot of data to support it and just not a lot of authors that want to embrace it. So I, I got suckered into it. And what I learned from writing three series books in a row without coming up for air was that it's really hard to sustain your energy without that break that comes with celebrating a book and sharing it with other people. But instead, just rolling into it, it made me feel for like Lord of the Rings, you know, J.R.R. Tolkien, because that's what I felt like I was writing, you know, after a while. <laughs> this is all one big book. But I learned how to pace myself in it. I got I got really crushed down by it by the end, like surprisingly so for someone that is fairly prolific and has been doing this a while. It wasn't a faster pace and in, in some ways it was slower, but it wore me down in a different way. I had to find new reserves. That's interesting. It, did you feel like, my fear would be like, let's say I wrote books one, two, and three, and then rolled them all out at once. I, I think my fear would be that I would think of that as a celebration for book three, and I would feel like books one and two had never really gotten their deserved celebration. Was there any part of that in what you were reacting to? There was. And, and you know, I don't remember what I write from one book to the next. I mean, I know the characters really well, but it, it's like with my own kids. It's like, what happened last week? Well, I'm not sure. Remind me, you know. And so it, it did feel like giving the first two a little bit of short shrift. And yet at the same time, all of the promotion and energy goes into book one. So when you're out and talking about them while I'm talking about Detective Delaney Pace series, all of my publisher's energy, all of the book bloggers energy is all on her silent bones as if the other two don't exist. And I, I barely remember writing that book. It was a year <laughs> and a half ago, you know, but it's, it was an interesting experiment. And for me, it also was a, a first time to go police procedural to go with a straight up, you know, detective, which I have never personally been. I'm a lawyer by background and a couple of other things, private investigator. I've done those things. I felt some comfort with those. But it was my first time to embrace the crime side, full tilt. Yeah, I find that very intimidating in uh, both my books. I have parts that have, uh, you know, the police always make a make an appearance. And I do have subject matter experts I can tap into for that. But the idea of writing a whole book based on that is terrifying. <laughs> it, it, it scared me more than anything, Maddie. I really begged not to. And they kept going, yeah, I love that. We'll do this book. And by the way, you're going to need the protagonist to be a detective. And it'd be like, that's not what I pitched. <laughs> I kept pitching, you know, amateur sleuth, private eye. I finally gave in. And what saved me was that a dear friend of ours is a police chief. And he's not just a police chief. He's this gregarious, fun-loving guy that while he plays it by the rules on his job, he's a seat of his pants kind of guy. And so he totally got what I was trying to do. And when I said, I'm going to bring you scenarios and your job is to keep her from going to jail or losing her job 
but to help me achieve whatever semi-vigilante shit she's even getting into, right? And, and keep her on the edge. And he loved it. And he embraced it. He's like, okay, well, I see where you're going with this. And we're going to take it a different direction because this would never work, but this would. And I was like, man, Travis, you narrowly escaped a life of crime yourself. You know, I can see it in you. But it was the only thing that got me through it, having him on speed dial. Yeah, having those subject matter experts that are also excited about the storytelling aspect is it's it's pretty rare and it's super valuable. Yeah, I've had people I work with before whose reaction to it is mostly that can't happen or yes. that no wait they say that would never happen. It's like now wait a second, <laughs> are you telling me it's impossible or just improbable? Because I'm going for improbable, right? That's the whole goal here. Yeah. So he was yeah. wonderful. Yeah, you don't want to be writing your novels about the things that happen every day. Not the purpose. Exactly. It was all peaceful and beautiful. And, you know, and then we went to sleep and did it again tomorrow. You know, no one wants to then read we all that. followed the rules. Yeah. You want to live a life like that, but you want to read something that gets you going. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just curious, do you have any insights yet as to whether the data that your publisher was basing these decisions on the scheduling decision, the genre decision, is it panning out or? They say it is. And of course, you know, going to be months before I see dollars associated with it, which is the only way to compare it to past releases, right? But the ranks are great. And they tell me that they're just thrilled. And they also have had a couple of authors they've done this with over the last few months. And enough so that, and I'm going to give them a lot of credit here because I've been told you know, independent cuss that I am with all my other books being independent, don't expect to get your way on anything. And not only did they come to me multiple times to pulse check whether I still had the intestinal fortitude to go with a three book launch versus, say, a rapid release launch, you know, where you're every 10 with days to two weeks apart, which kind of tickles the Amazon algorithms the way that we in the indie world maybe in the last few years have thought we were aiming to do if we were going to do a fast launch. They gave me yes, no, multiple times as we approached the gate. They also changed the covers for me. When I when they brought me these beautiful covers that didn't reflect the books, I said, I love that cover artist. And here's why I'm worried about these covers. And they went back and changed all three covers. So I've had a beautiful experience with them and things like that made me really trust them. So we shall see. But signs right now are looking really good. So we're going to knock wood and cross fingers and sprinkle pixie dust and all <laughs> that. But, but literally, I turned in the outlines for the next three books today, which I feel is also a good sign. So oh, well, congratulations. That's very exciting. Yeah, uh, it, it, it kind of, you know, at, on the heels of our, you know, first part of our conversation, it kind of feels like I'm a glutton for punishment, but <laughs> it is exciting. I yeah, love but at it. least you're being punished with uh, the people that you know and love, i.e. your characters. and Get to spend more time with them. Exactly. I do love them. So let's switch tacks to the other question, the other of the What I Learned questions, which is, what did you learn from Her Last Cry that you would like to share with your fellow readers? I think that what I learned, and I really learned it through the process of being uh, tutored at my editor's knee on you know, Pamela, you're writing procedural now, and this is what we think your readers want. We know you've found connections with your readers before on the things that make you you. Bring those with you. And now let us show you what we think they're looking for if you're going to go into this and, and, and how, to, how to satisfy what they're looking for. So what, what I learned is I needed to read a whole lot of straight up crime fiction, and I did. And in fact, on my own podcast last year, I exclusively turned to crime fiction writers to have a built-in reason to read the people that I thought were really on top of the game and writing the things that my readers would want to read and taking a look at those and saying, okay, what, is, what about that works for me and what doesn't? How is it going to change or not change what I do? And in the end, I found a way that I think my readers are going to come to these books and by my readers, I mean the ones that came with me on the journey, not my new ones. My new ones are going to be like, hey, this is Delaney. This is great. You know, let's roll. But my old ones maybe have some expectations. They knew Patrick Flint or they knew Jen Harrington or they knew 
my more romantic mysteries. And what I think they're going to see is that this embraces both worlds, that there's a lot of Easter eggs in terms of, you know, mentions of characters because it, they all inhabit the same world in the same timeline. It just so happens they're all doing different things. And so you'll see some Easter eggs and you'll also see the things that I think people that read a lot of my books enjoy. I love the characters, you know, it, these are crime fiction novels, but I love the characters and I can't help it. I fall in love with them and they get a lot of my energy and focus and a lot of what drives them to solve crimes or do what they do or lands them in a position to solve the crimes they solve is because of them and who they are. And, and, that, and it always starts with that with me. And I learned that I can still do that the procedural at the same time as I can and maybe find a, a way to do a few new things with it. So it was fun. I'm curious as to what was the most difficult change you had to make between the type of books you were writing before this, this current set, this current series, and that series. You know, the, the thing that I struggled with the most, as evidenced by the structural edit on book one versus book three, my editor on book one was like, yeah, I love it. Here, change everything. <laughs> Loving so much. I mean, I just read the first one paragraphs and I was like, hey, I've got three weeks to do this. I can do that all in the last day. And then I read the rest. I'm like, oh, God, no. Okay. And, but then we get to the last one, which I thought was a hot mess. I mean, literally, Maddie, the last few chapters I turned in saying, okay, Helen, I'm really having a breakdown here. So trust me here, these last few chapters, this is roughly what will happen. Delaney will kick ass and all will be well. And that was three chapters worth of maybe three sentences. And she's like, I trust you. It's fine. I finished the book after the structural edit, and it basically got a goodbye kiss and a hug. That was, my, that was my structural edit, and I couldn't believe it. So I learned something, right? The hardest thing was that I was putting in too much story. I've been writing character-driven mysteries, and to me, it was so much about the characters that I could include a whole lot of them and their world and what made them tick, but I had to make room for the crime narrative. And because I had to make room for the crime narrative, I had to learn to say, save it for the next book, save it for the next book. So literally, when I turned in the first draft, what all of the personal story of the two main characters in that book ultimately was pieced out over three. Helen just basically said, slow your roll. <laughs> and, and it became a, that. And so in sitting down with my story partner and husband to brainstorm over the last few days, that was our discussion was like, Got it. We got it. We got to save something for books seven through nine. So let's, we got a lot of characters here. People are starting to care about a lot of them. Let's, let's make sure that we save good stuff and they'll have something good to come back. And in fact, by the time we started, finished talking about four to six, we had already basically done the character progression for seven through nine. But I think that was a big thing. Maybe the second biggest thing was that she was really uh, big on uh, structure in the sense that at 50, at that 50% mark, X needs to happen at the 70% mark, Y needs to happen. And it, it, within 5% or so the pace of the book as it flows and something, you know, something really big here within this world, something really big here within this world. And wow. We went back and forth a couple of times about what would be big enough, you know, to, cause she's, she's talking about propelling the reader at points where they feel an emotional expectation for a lift or a push. And now, and I literally am like sitting down with word counts and chapters and divvying it up on books two and three, saying, I'm not going to make that mistake again. I want to make sure the whole book pivots around the, the middle, you know, and sagging middle. It's a problem for a lot of us, right? Yeah. And so everything's going to pivot off of 50%. Instead of me thinking everything pivots off the point of no return at 20%, I'm really thinking about pivoting off of 50 and making sure then we just absolutely throw it into, you know, the highest, the fastest gear we have and race toward home. And, and it really did seem to impact the pace of the books and the propulsion of the book. So oh, it was as much talking to, write, to writers as to readers there. But yeah. I, what I hope readers get out of that is a sense of, of a fast pace and a sense that they're not going to be disappointed and get to the middle and yawn and go to sleep. It's, it, the book's going to take off like a rocket. That is it, so cool. If I did it right. 
<laughs> well, I think you've intrigued readers and writers with that description. So cool. So, uh, Pamela, it's always lovely to chat with you. And I know people would like to know where they can go to find out more information about you and your books and everything you do online. Well, I'd love to tell them. And you can find me at PamelaFaganHutchins.com, which will either provide you with a way to buy any of my books in any format or for the ones that aren't available on my website, how to get to them. Uh, the Delaney Pace books are ebook exclusive to Amazon. So if you're looking for the ebook, you're going to need to go um, there, but that means they are in Kindle Unlimited. And I'm most interactive with with readers on my Facebook page and I have a Facebook group. So if you get to my page, which is Pamela Fagan Hutchins, you'll find the group and, and we can chat. So great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great to see you. Nice seeing you too.